hello. Uh, thanks all for coming. Um, uh, as, as introduced, I'm Lynn Palmer. I'm the WISE Partnership Director. Um, I'm going to try not to get stuck behind the lectern, but that's fine. Just glad that you've all sat near the front. It's not, uh, we're not filling the, filling the lecture theatre, but there's going to be quite a few um, interactive bits. So I'm going to need people to get up and do stuff as well. So uh, I, I didn't quite know, you know what the setup was going to be here. So we've got a bit of room around the front where we'll um, do, some of, do some of the uh, activities that I've got. Um, but I'll just give you a little bit about my background to start with. So I'm a, a chartered engineer with the Institute of Mechanical Engineering. So um, I, I, as I said to Ismini when she asked me if I would uh, come and talk tonight, I don't have a great history with computer science. Um, so don't ask me anything too technical. And I think that this talk tonight is a little bit different. Um, it, it's, not a, you know, it's, not a technical, it's not a technical talk. Uh, it's about different aspects. Um, so uh, uh, hopefully that's um, going to be useful to you. Um, I worked as an engineer in the defence sector for 20 years, actually, just over 20 years. And um, for 15 of those years, I worked um, various different kind of flexible working arrangements. So I've done part-time working, I've done job share, I've done a job split, I've worked um, hours that have ranged between 18 hours and 30 hours a week, um, as well as working, I have worked full-time, um, and I am working full-time again at the moment, but that was all covering a period of time when I had, uh, had young children, three children, who are now uh, a little bit older, and so I'm able to to, to work full time again. Um, so, if there's any questions about any of that, we can come back to that uh, any, you know, later on in the later on in the session. And and I'm quite happy if anybody has any questions, just to ask them as as we go along. We don't particularly need to wait till the end. Um, it was actually going on a wise event when I was at school doing maths and physics, and I didn't really quite know what I wanted to do. I knew that I was taking maths and physics A levels, but Beyond that, I wasn't really sure where it was taking me. And I went on a WISE event at Brunel University. Um, and I came away from that thinking, oh yeah, engineering sounds like a, a, good, uh, a good career to go into. It was very interesting, varied, very, um, lots of different options that you can take. So I went and did a, um, an engineering degree at that point. Um, and then a, a year ago, I got the opportunity to join the WISE team. So I've been with WISE for, for just, just nearly a year now. Um, and uh, it's taken me to all sorts of universities, all sorts of companies all around the country. So it's, been, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating job. Um, just so that I know uh, the kind of audience I've got, who has actually heard of WISE already? So a couple of you, but some people haven't heard anything at all. Uh, I didn't get my little, find my little zapper to move it on. It's okay, I'll just uh, click the button. There we go. So who are WISE? So we're an organisation that promotes women in science, technology and engineering. Um, and as you can see from the No Expense Spared Sash, um, the target is to get a million more women into STEM careers by 2020. And um, we are funded by corporate membership, and so we've got members now, uh, nearly 80 uh, corporate members, uh, and that allows us to run the events and the activities that we do. And um, Plymouth University has joined as a member as well, and BCS is a member, so this event for me, um, you know, it's a, it's a double whammy. Uh, we've got members on both sides of the, of the occasion. Um, so, as I've said, uh, WISE wants to get a million more women into STEM, but we're only a very small team. There's only 10 of us that work for WISE, and we cover the whole country. So we need to do this by joining with other people and with other networks in order to reach as many people as possible. Um, so that's why coming out to talk to you is important. And if I can get people to be inspired, um, interested in what we're doing, wanting to help and wanting to start um, running things and passing the message on about um, technology careers for girls and women, then that's going to be how we get to a million more women. 
So the, the WISE network, again. Oh, this, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so this is about what you can do as an individual. Um, you can join WISE as an individual for free. And the things that you then can take advantage of are opportunities like tonight, networking and speaker opportunities. So there's some great food out there that um, people may have already partaken of, and I think there'll be the opportunity to, to do that afterwards as well. Um, we, get, uh, we send out a monthly newsletter so you can find out all about the activities and events that are going on, what's out there in the kind of the political world, research and reports that have been going on about women in um, technology, engineering and uh, uh, science careers. You can raise your personal profile, so you can, um, you, you can be on the website if you wanted to blog or if you wanted to be on there as a role model, um, and that might be useful um, when you're know, looking for a, 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 a new job of some sort, um, and it might just be something that you know, is, is good to, to, to try to do. Um, we arrange lots of inspiring events, so you can go along to those and you get to find out about them. They're all advertised on the WISE website, but also in the newsletter, and um, they are all around the country, although we'll come back to this in a minute. There have probably been less in this area than in other parts. Obviously, if you're in London, then you can pretty much go to an event every day of the uh, every day of the year, to be honest, <laughs> um, that has something related to women in science, technology. But actually, in some parts of the country, it's a little bit more difficult. So hopefully, we're going to start to address that tonight. Um, you can access training. So there's training courses that are available either for a group to, uh, to, to arrange. So Plymouth University could arrange somebody to come and do some specific training, or you can go on them as an individual as well. Uh, you could offer to be a role model, so that would be great. So we go into schools quite often. We go into um, uh, universities and colleges, and we try to take people from the world of technology and engineering. Um, and as a bit of an example, we are going to be joining with STEMETS, which is uh, another women in technology group, to run a, an event in the summer. And it's, um, it's an incubator project. So there's going to be a group of female entrepreneurs who will kind of pitch their projects, and it's in May. Um, and if they are chosen, they will then get to spend six weeks in, in, uh, in like this incubator house, which is actually going to be in London. So again, it does mean that there will be a requirement to go to, to London if you're able to help out. Um, and they're going to be provided with some kind of expertise that drops in to help them develop their entrepreneurial ideas and we're going to have a wise Wednesday so hopefully there's going to be people from the from the world of work that can come along and talk to the people in the house and be able to inspire them help them with their ideas help them to kind of move it along a bit so over that six week period they should be able to develop some really great um, really great projects so we'll be that's the kind of thing that we'd be looking for people to get involved with both to pitch, you know, to, to pitch their ideas and also to come along and help on the Wise Wednesday to turn up and maybe look at you know, the projects and move them along a little bit. Um, and um, as I said before, to, to expand the network. So tell people about Wise, tell them about the events that are going on, get other people to come along and join in. So the network. Um, it's, this is the, the heart of what WISE does. We kind of facilitate, facilitate the linkages between all these different parts of uh, all these different corporate members. So we've got UK industry, um, we've got the links with the universities, we've got links to colleges and schools, the individual talented women, well and the men as well actually that ought to say because um, it's great to see men here as well today. It's a sign of things really being able to progress when the men take on board some of the issues and the challenges that women might face and to understand that and to be interested in having a diverse workforce, a diverse group of students. Um, so it's, it's great to have men involved as well as the women. 
Uh, we're linked to the institutes, so like the BCS, and we've also got links with um, Institute of um, Chemical Engineers, the Civil Engineers, uh, various different institutes that we're um, linked up with, and some unions as well. So Prospect and Unite are both corporate members of WISE. And um, again, that's a great way of getting the message out there. They, they might be doing things all around the country as well, so we can work with them and support them on various different activities. So I want to encourage you all to get involved. So great that you've started by coming tonight. Um, and hopefully that's going to help you to uh, feel energised, um, potentially to uh, have access to all those different um, benefits. And you know, who knows, you might end up meeting uh, Princess Anne, who's our royal patron and as Meany knows she turns up to a number of uh, a number of events that we um, that we put on each year and um, it's very she's she's a great supporter in fact she's going to be going along to the launch of this um, uh, project that we're doing with STEM apps so if anybody did want to get involved with that then that's uh, an opportunity like I say it's April or May uh, I can't remember the actual date if you're interested let me know Okay, so I was going to talk a little bit more about um, WISE hubs and sectors. So we've set up WISE Energy, which was a pilot towards the end of last year. Um, and it was to get more people involved and engaged with what was going on. So we had the feedback that people wanted to do something, they wanted to get involved with WISE, but they didn't really quite know what. So we thought, well, if we could set up things that specifically draw people in, give people activities to do that are closer to their hearts, then we can start to get that level of engagement. And, and that's been very successful. So the Wise Energy has now got over 100 people involved in a LinkedIn group. Um, and there are different discussion topics that are raised. And um, I don't think people generally get together because it's a it's a... A kind of a, it's a network that uh, covers around the whole country, um, but it is discussing topics that are specific to the energy industry. So we're now thinking about expanding that model because that's worked really well. And the two that will probably interest you here today is Wise Technology and Wise Southwest. So we've got the two kind of opportunities. One which, in the same way as Wise Energy, would give people in the technology uh, sector an opportunity to discuss the issues that are most relevant to you. Um, and we hope that that's going to be run by you know, somebody in the sector who can raise those, topic, those topics of discussion, who, can, um, uh, un who understands what it is that people in that area might be most interested in talking about and finding out a bit more about. So we've got Wise Technology. And then the other one, Wise Southwest, is the start of some regional hubs that we want to try and set up so that there is more going on in some areas. So we've identified some areas where we think there's probably a real um, uh, desire to have these activities. Southwest is one of them, so it would cover the kind of the, the Plymouth and Exeter um, areas and, and draw people in. Um, I come from the Bristol area, so I'm interested and quite, uh, and, and we're going to be setting up Wise Bristol as well. And um, the other area that we want to try to cover this year is Wise North East, because we've got a number of corporate members in the North East, up in Sunderland and Durham and around there. So we're going to try and pull them together into another, into another hub. So um, the Wise Southwest is, is obviously, you know, where, where you're going to be most interested. And, and what I wanted to do now is to try and start the bit where you have to get up. <laughs> so, um, and I wanted to try and get a bit of feedback. So what I've got is just two flip charts. And what I want to do is try and get the feedback uh, and some ideas about how we might take these forwards. So could I just have a show of hands? Who is more interested in getting involved with the WISE technology? So there's a couple, three, yeah, okay. And so the others, I'm presuming, are more interested in a local, a wise southwest. 
could you divide yourself kind of half and half, but if, if it doesn't quite work like that, it doesn't matter. So if there was four looking at wise technology and are we about 10 and six at wise Southwest, that's absolutely fine, to get together around those flip charts and answer those questions. So why it is that you would be more interested in, in, in that particular activity? And that would lead on to what it is that you might think it would be good to get out of it. The when is kind of, um, it's probably more appropriate to the southwest. It would be about how often you might want to get together, um, whether it was you know, a couple of times a year or more than that. Um, and a how that might happen. So is it through specific events that you wanted to come together or is it? more a case of having a kind of a virtual link up um, and then uh, if you would be able to put your name onto a post-it note your email onto a post-it note and then when we start to develop those ideas a bit I can get back to you directly and um, let you know kind of how it's progressing so I think we'll probably just spend about five minutes doing that if you could I think there's there's a pen by each of the flip charts um, and uh, just to jot down, you know, answers to those questions. Right, we've got the post-it notes. Thanks very much for that. I think there were some really great ideas, and what I'll try to do is, like I say, if, if, I, if you can put some email addresses on so that I can get back in touch with you and let you know, because I quite like the thought of, you know, maybe thinking about summer camps, maybe tying a summer camp in with it being in Plymouth as well, and then I can let people know and it, I can use you then to advertise it and, and potentially get involved as well. So all those things will be really, really useful. Um, I just popped this up because one of the, I was saying about the network, um, and uh, one of the things that we uh, are, are obviously working, we're working with um, B the BCS. And I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew about BCS Women as well, which um, we're very linked with because um, the, the, the lady, Gillian Arnold, that runs BCS Women is on the WISE board. So we've got some very specific links with Gillian. And, um, the, I asked her what she wanted me to say about uh, BCS while I was here. So she gave me this slide. Um, so there's a couple of things on there that you, you, that you might be aware of um, already. The Apathon, which is something that um, Ismini's going to be running here somewhere. Not exactly sure which. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, within one of the big halls or something like that. Yeah. 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 So that'll be for friends and family. Um, and then there's um, there's a lecture going on in May. I'm not exactly sure where that that is. I have to say, but all this is on the BCS website, which I. I presume that you, you know, have access to fairly readily. I, I quite like the sound of the fact that you can have a, a, a CV clinic. I thought that's a good thing. Um, they, there are um, taster days. Um, there's um, mentoring and mentoring um, awareness and training. So there's a whole host of things that you can access through, through BCS as well. And um, we try to kind of support those, each other's activities wherever we can. I just wanted to pop that up, and I just need to uh, um, close that one and bring the other one back up. Here we go. Uh, where were we? There we go. Okay, so we did hubs and sectors. Thank you very much for that. That's good, useful. So the next thing I wanted to do was to introduce a report to you that was launched at the 2014 WISE Awards. We had a daytime conference that went on this year to go alongside the um, 
the awards. Um, and the title of, the, uh, of, of, the, of this research paper was Not for People Like Me. And it was sponsored by Network Rail, who's one of our um, very engaged corporate members. Um, and uh, it was written by Avril MacDonald, who's a professor of physics. And she's also uh, on the WISE board as well. And it looked at why STEM engagement activities have a limited impact on girls and other young people who are underrepresented in the STEM workforce. So it's, um, it, it, was, it was about girls and getting young people involved in STEM, but there's some things that would be quite interesting for us to, to have a think about as well. So I just wanted to do a few exercises related to that. Um, now we'd need the post-it notes again. Uh, has everybody got a pen? Uh, got some post-it notes. If you can kind of just, you only need one. You only need one for this at the moment. I think we only need one at the moment. Yeah. What I wanted to do, rather than just tell you the results, I wanted to kind of come at it from a bit of an interactive uh, way. So if you could start by imagining that you're about to introduce yourself to somebody that you've never met and write down three things that you might say about yourself. Um, so just three things, how you might introduce yourself to somebody who you've never met. I'm not going to ask you to say what they are. <laughs> so it's for you. <laughs> this is for you. You're not going to have to share it with anybody. So you can write down three things that, that you would say about yourself if you were meeting somebody new. So I'll just give you, I'll just give you a minute to, to think about that. It's not a trick question either, so it's, um, you don't have to. Number one, I should have done this, the slide so it came up one point at a time, but I wasn't quite smart enough to get it all sorted. I closed it down before I thought about building the PowerPoint slide. Oh, have, have we got three three things that you would say about yourself? Is everybody there? Need a bit more time? Still writing. Okay, so I don't need to know what it is that you've written, but I'd like you to put up your hand if you used um, like an, an activity to describe, you know, I am an engineer, I live in Bristol, I like playing football, whatever it happens to be. So, yeah, who was it that, so there was three of you that wrote it like that. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, right, well, <laughs> well, you might want to just think about what you would have done if you'd kind of just gone with, gone with it. So put your hand up if you used more of a, an adjective. I'm a patient person, I'm logical. Um, okay, two, one, okay, one, two, three. Right, so probably slightly more did the adjectives. That's interesting. Because this is called, this is about how we self-identify, um, and that's what's in this report. Which, if you go onto the Wise 
website, you can um, download it all. It's, it's all on there. So the details are, uh, are all there. Um, and the, the interesting thing is that generally it, it's more of a male characteristic to use verbs and activities. So, so you say, I am a computer scientist. I like to, whatever it is, you know, play, watch the television. It's doing things. Um, and that it's more of a female characteristic to talk about how you are. So it's quite interesting that it was probably more swayed towards the adjectives here than, than, the, um, than, than the verbs. Um, and, and actually, what the report says is that mostly when job descriptions and job adverts go out, it's very much about what you do. I build a bridge. I design a um, piece of software. Um, and actually, people, a, a lot of the underrepresented groups within the STEM area cannot identify with that being a person like me. And, and actually a much more um, kind of uh, an approach that well, what Network Rail have done is that they have completely changed their whole way of advertising so that it's not about I build a railway that, uh, you know, that is 100 miles long, whatever it happens to be, and goes from Birmingham to London. It's about what the benefit or the impact of that is. So it, you know, I build a bridge. It's brought communities together that were divided by um, you know, a, a boat trip that was not able to run through the winter. Or I designed a railway that means that people can work in London and live in Birmingham so they don't have to move house and leave their children's schooling or th other things like this. So it's about the impact, the benefit. And actually, they have found that they've had a, a, a massive change of uh, women interested in going into jobs within network rail because it's not just about a railway track or you know what, what, what the physical aspect it's about the impact and the benefit of what that does for people for a community um, and so what I wanted to do was to try and um, apply that each to you within your kind of job arrangement or um, within what you would like a job to be potentially so what I wanted to try to do um, yeah, I think we're right on, we're on to part two now. Start off by just talking about your job, or if it's not your job, what it is that you are studying, or maybe what you would like your job to be in the future. Um, so what I want to do within that a bit of time when you're talking to each, each other is think about a product or an achievement. So that is the I... Um, I do or I would like to um, design a particular bit of coding um, or produce a research document. Um, so it's, it's something that you produce. But also try and think about the work outcome. So what it is that that bit of coding would enable or that research document will uh, make something happen uh, and see whether you can do describe your job or what you'd like your job to be or what you'd like your kind of career to be in those terms so have a go at doing that um, so it's 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 two three and four what we're doing now it's two three and four together we won't do the last bit just yet so uh, get together in pairs and, and have a go at doing that <laughs> have we got pairs we've got two 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 are you able to pair up? Did, did you want to head round over uh, yes. to that side and uh, <laughs> do that? There we go.
over time. How you're progressing through, it's fine. Yeah. Um, how you're progressing through the tour. Have you got a feel for how much more what proportion you're through? Yeah. Um, Are we about the sort of halfway point? Yeah, more than halfway, I think. Okay, that's fine. I'm just thinking in terms of make sure that the catering doesn't disappear. Right, okay, so will they whip it away at half past? They have a tendency to, well, they've done it even earlier than that in the past. Oh, we've actually they? been sat in here and we've gone out and found there's nothing left. Oh, no. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no one um, yes. sitting Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. I can, um, oh, thank you. I, I can cut it a bit shorter no, no, if we need to, because there's, there's, there's no, sign there is. no okay. Well, I will try and finish at the half past eight, because I think that's probably quite long enough anyway. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll try and make sure we finish in, in an hour, because I think an hour is enough for anybody to... Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We don't want. I don't want to miss out on that. So. Are you still going? <laughs> or have you finished? Her, you're, I'll you're never forget her. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> I don't want to cut. I don't want to cut you short, but I'm aware that we're 20 past eight, so I think I'll kind of keep things moving. Otherwise, we're going to miss the opportunity to um, get out there and do some networking as well. Um, sorry, I was just I was just saying I didn't want to cut things short, but but we're 20 past eight, and I was just a little bit conscious that. Um, I didn't want to run over half past eight too much. Um, so what, what I think the best thing to do is to kind of take that bit away with you and we can perhaps you know, discuss it over, um, over some food and drink afterwards as well. So I won't particularly do the last bit because that's something that you all can do you know, yourselves. But it's about that thinking about your, your job or your ideal job in outcome terms and see whether you can write down a paragraph 
having had a bit of a chat about it, that would, that would do that. And the, 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 the reason that I wanted to do this is to, um, it, it, because it's going to engage girls and those who are underrepresented more to be able to say, that is a person like me, hopefully it would similarly, I know because you're all people that are interested in the computer science world already, um, but hopefully it would help you to develop some real job satisfaction to understand that these are my, the, you know, that this is something that is going to impact the world and it's going to benefit communities. It's going to, you know, the, the benefits of my job are going to be or could be, and it's going to give you that bit of inspiration. It's going to give you that real feeling of, yes, this is something that I really want to do, and it's going to it's going to make a difference. So that's what I'm hoping you'll get from when you go away and you write that job paragraph. Um, in outcome terms. So I'll leave you to do that. Why oh, a sad old echoey. <laughs> I'll leave you to do that um, uh, you know, uh, at a, at a later, de later date. Um, okay, I'm going to do another quick, I think we've probably got time for this, uh, another quick um, get up and move around a bit. Um, the other thing that this report does is that it, it, I don't know, you might have heard about this from somewhere else as well, because um, it, it's something else that reiterates the importance of self-identity, and it's based on the ten types of scientist, and these were first described in the Science Council's report of 2011, and it shows that STEM jobs require a different range of skills beyond just the technical knowledge. So, you know, technical knowledge, yes, really important, but these are often re referred to as employability skills. So they're things that are equally applicable in whatever role that you might work in. Um, and so there are different types of scientists which are also different types of people. So these might be the people like me that the, the underrepresented groups are not identifying with at the moment. So is this something about how we should be able to describe our scientists, our engineers, our technologists in these terms? Um, so I've, what I've done, they've come out a little bit small for this, but I wanted you all to kind of get up and look round. There's 10 of them all around the room. Um, so it's these, um, these types. And if you can see from what's uh, up here, one that you think, yes, that probably refers, that's probably what my skills are about, then uh, there's a bit more description on the bits of paper. So I just thought it'd be interesting if you could all have a quick look round, see whether any of those you really resonate with you. And then I wanted to just do a quick poll as to who came out where, as if there was a predominance in one particular area for people that have gone into computer science and IT, or whether you all are very different. So we'll, we'll try and do this in five minutes. And then I'll probably just wrap up at that point. So we've got kind of a, a grouping there of developer and teacher, both. You're just developer and you're both. Do you like a bit of communicating? Well, that's, that is, I mean, that is a great skill because you know, so many times we get STEM people that find that bit more difficult, they're communicating. So then we've got a kind of a spread through business business side of things or marketing or? Not really, but no? it sounded cool. So okay, you like the idea of that. <laughs> That's okay, because that could be a future job for you, yeah, couldn't yeah. it? <laughs> Explore it. So yeah, something about the kind of the, the, the research side of things. There's a couple of you in that area. Investigator, which what? I think that was, is that about, you know, we've got developer. Oh yeah, so that's still research work, but it's kind of in a um, piecing things together. So again, I kind of thought that's where a couple of people might be, um, and then some people who you, you think you can see a bit of everything in it. So yeah, yes. <laughs> so you spread like that. So I, I think the thing. Uh, you know, again, it might just help you to think about where your career might go. Like you said, 
you know, there's something there that's interesting for you. So maybe in the future, you kind of can see that you'd like to go into something, whether it's business or marketing, whatever it happens to be. Um, and it, 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 again, it's just trying to give you some little clues as to work out what, you know, where you might want your career to go and how you might want to move, you know, teaching, putting in computer science with the teaching and the communicating side of things, really, really important. So um, that's great. Thanks a lot for that. I think it's just a quick sit back down again, and I'll just. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, right. Okay. This. Okay. This is going to a bit bit of a bit of a tease with this because we haven't really got time to go through this so um, I've flashed it up here um, and it's something that um, you might want to come back to now this is another bit of research that I was going to kind of um, uh, share with you and it was um, it was done by BP um, with Capability Jane and BP particularly wanted to look at why there weren't many women systems architects within their company. Capability Jane is a, a recruitment company that um, specialises in professional part-time posts. And so they asked, BP asked Capability Jane to do this research into the IT world to look at what the motivating factors in the workplace were for men and for women. And it came up with two quite different sets of results. We haven't got time to really kind of go through it in the level I was going to, but um, it, it is available through the BCS website. There is a report on there um, which you can pull off, and, and it's got <laughs> it's got the the chart on there with all the different um, um, motivating factors and what I wanted to do was just kind of raise it because again it's it's a way of understanding what resonates with you and it it might just help you to think about ways of working that either um, you can ask about within your job at the moment or that when you go into the world of work you can say is this available and all the smart companies should be able to respond and say yes of course so there will be those that want to go in and say yeah I want a much more challenging and fulfilling role I want more career progression I want to be better paid please can you give that to me but and that's fine because that's kind of traditionally how we um, negotiate about jobs um, what we're going to get paid but remember that uh, over over time, companies ought to be thinking more about the other factors. Is this a convenient location? Well, and if it's not, it's not particularly about do I'm, am I going to have to move house, but it's about asking for what are the opportunities to work from home maybe, to reduce the commuting. So is that going to be a possibility? Um, is this uh, an inclusive working environment? You can find that out um, and, and what is the opportunity to kind of network and other things like that? Is there a, is there a women's network? Um, and if not, could, could you set one up within a company that you go to work for? Um, and what are the opportunities for working flexibly and part-time? And, and, and ask about them. And, don't, and again, it, applies, it does apply for, for men as for women, because as you can see, um, convenient location was fifth for men. Um, inclusive work environment six so it's it's not to be to, you know to have the courage to go in there and ask for it as much as you might ask for different career opportunities go in and ask for different flexible working opportunities and things like that but if you want to come back to it we can talk about it outside um, and like I say the report is um, is available through the BCS the BCS website so in the interests of finishing on time um, uh, that's, that's kind of it. So I hope that it's, it's helped you think a little bit more about your job satisfaction, um, a little bit more about what motivates you, how you might 
tie that into a future job um, and ultimately that is then going to mean that you stay in a technology or other STEM job which is part of what WISE is about, getting people to stay in those jobs and progress so that you can see there's great progression there, you can, you can take your career where you want it to go. So thank you very much for listening and taking part, it's been great.